All right, so here in Antarctica, uh, there are four different planes uh, that fly in and out of McMurdo Station. Uh, landing on snow and ice requires very specific planes to operate. So with that being said, three out of four planes we're talking about today actually have skis mounted on them so they can land and take off from the snow. The planes here are ran by two different contractors, or just two different contracts in general. One is the Air National Guard, essentially the U.S. military, and the other is Kenboric Air, or KBA for short. Uh, they are a private company ran out of Canada. Uh, the four planes we are going to talk about are the Twin Otter, the Basler, the LC-130, and then C-17. First one we're going to talk about is the Twin Otter. Uh, this is the smallest of the four planes, um, but because it is so small and it is very versatile, it can get pretty much anywhere. Uh, the only real uh, downside is it can't bring a lot of cargo and it can't get super far just based on the fact that it's smaller and can't carry as much fuel, but it doesn't need a lot of space to get off, so it can pretty much land and take off anywhere. So it doesn't need an airstrip per se. It can pretty much take off like with just half the runway here at Williams Airfield, which is pretty crazy. It is a plane that reaches the most remote places. It is commonly used to get to fuel camps and fuel caches because it just can land anywhere. Just for pop culture's sake, this is also the exact same type of plane that Mr. Beast uh, went up in when he went to do his Antarctica video. Second, we're gonna talk about the Basler. So the Basler is the larger of the two planes ran by KBA and is easily identified by its raised nose. Basler came to be in 1990. It's just basically a modified Douglas C-47 or DC-3. So these planes are old. Uh, literally one of these planes uh, here at McMurdo Station flew in D-Day. Pretty crazy to think about that, that they're still alive and kicking. But the Basler, uh, being a bit larger than the Twin Otter, can make it to farther field camps as well as make it to the South Pole Station. They even have one Basler stationed at the South Pole currently this summer. Stable in the air and it's pretty easy to get up off the ice, still being a relatively small plane. It can pretty much get most places and the Basler is probably one of the more popular or well-known planes here. It's probably the icon of Antarctica or just polar regions in general. Third, uh, we are going to talk about uh, the LC-130. So this is the workhorse of the United States Antarctic program or USAP. Uh, they are large planes that can carry up to 50 people or else bring a lot of cargo to large field camps such as Waste Divide. That's what it's used a lot for here. There are as many as four LC-130 stationed at McMurdo Station during the Antarctic summer to run missions throughout that season. They are very close to the C-130 but they have had skis mounted to them and they have a number of different modifications that have been made just to help them out in this polar climate. They frequent the South Pole Station most days of the week and they rotate different planes in and out of New Zealand weekly for maintenance and change of crew. There are only six LC-130s on the planet that I know of and four of them are here right now. Now with all that said, LC-130s are super old and are constantly breaking down because of mechanical issues. They have not come up with a replacement for these planes and because of that they are still running them here and they're gonna run them into the ground. The Air National Guard is only contracted to actually complete 25% of the missions assigned due to the combination of bad weather and mechanical issues. For example, last week Thursday, one out of three planes flew. Friday, two out of four planes flew. Saturday, zero out of three planes flew. So you can see that they're very inconsistent. So when you are told you're going to be flying out on an LC-130, you kind of know that the likelihood of actually leaving is pretty low most of the time. Even when they take off, it's not uncommon to boomerang and that just means basically take off and come back without being able to uh, land where they wanted to go. That is the paradox of the LC-130. And lastly, we have the C-17. Uh, C-17s are the largest planes that we fly in and out of Antarctica. Uh, like the LC-130, they are another military plane, and it is solely used to get people on or off continent. So they are not equipped with skis, so they are only used at the beginning and the end of the summer season to move large amounts of supplies and people to airfields at McMurdo Station, uh, Phoenix Airfield and Williams Airfield, both on sea ice, and Phoenix Airfield only operates at the beginning and end of the season just because it becomes too soft on the snow for the C-17 to land or take off. I personally arrived on a C-17 in October and, and we flew in with a helicopter on board. Pretty cool. Uh, they fly from Christchurch, New Zealand to McMurdo Station in Antarctica in about five hours as compared to the eight hour flight that the LC-130 would do. So they definitely are the preferred plane of travel uh, when you're coming to and from the ice. Uh, flights can hold up to 120 people if they aren't bringing cargo. So they are an efficient method 
of getting people deployed in the beginning of the season as well as redeployed at the end of the summer. And with a population of under 1,000 people, you can get a lot of people in and out pretty quickly. So uh, those are four planes used by US Antarctic program. Uh, I'm sure there are a number of other planes that are used by other countries' Antarctic stations. So thanks for watching, and there's a lot more videos on the way, so make sure to tune in, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. We'll see ya.